safety of motorists flying the Muratala Mohammed Bridge at the Jamata on Lokoja uh, Abuja Highway at night is the priority of the Federal Ministry of Works, Housing and Power. That's according to the Deputy Director of Electrical and Street Light Services of the Ministry, Mr. Saka Ojufo, who disclosed that the street lights will improve the safety of road users during and after the Salah celebration. A whole lot has happened uh, on the weekend of sports and uh, time for us to join uh, Ayotunde Balogo with more. Yes, indeed, a lot has been happening in the world of sports. And we start now from the Rio Paralympic Games. Good news for Nigeria. Esther Oyema has won the country's third medal at the Games in Rio after clinching silver in the 55 kilogram power lifting event. Oyema, who owns the world record going into the competition, lifted a total of 127 kilograms to place second behind Mexico's Amelia Perez, who totaled 130 kilograms. Team Nigeria has three medals, one gold and two silver, and currently occupies the 23rd spot on the medals table. And now to football and in the English Premier League, Super Eagles forward Kelechi Ihanacho recorded an assist and then scored what eventually turned out to be the winner as Man City beat fierce city rivals Man United 2-1 at Old Trafford. Zlatan Ibrahimovic getting the consolation for the Red Devils United. In other games, FC Bournemouth edged West Brom 1-0. Santi Cazorla's 90th minute penalty helped Arsenal beat Southampton 2-1 at the Emirates. Burnley and Hull City battled to a 1-0 draw. Crystal Palace beat Middlesbrough 2-1 at the Riverside in a game that saw Christian Benteke score for Palace. Tottenham Hotspur thumped Stoke City by four goals to nil, while Nigeria's Odion Igalo scored Watford's first goal in their come-from-behind win over West Ham United at the London Stadium. In the day's tea time kickoff, Liverpool beat champions Leicester City by four goals to one at Anfield. Now, Jose Mourinho has suggested that a bad start to the game contributed largely to his side's loss in the Manchester derby. City ended United's perfect start to the season with a 2-1 victory at Old Trafford, and Mourinho reckons his team could have played a lot better, especially in the first half. He also believes Man United should have been awarded a penalty following Claudio Bravo's foul on Wayne Rooney, and another incident where it appeared Nicolas Otamendi, the City defender, intentionally handled the ball to prevent a cross in the penalty box from a United player. Stan Wawrinka believes he has what it takes to beat Novak Djokovic in Sunday's U.S. Open final following his fourth set win over Kei Nishikori in their semi-final clash. Wawrinka halted Djokovic's bid for career Grand Slam in 2015 with a stunning fourth set victory in the French Open final. And he is confident he can repeat that success. Although he admits he is in for a very tough game, the 31-year-old is convinced he can upset the world number one if he finds his best form. And still on the U.S. Open, the women's singles final is still ongoing between world number one Angelique Keba and Karolina Pliskova. Keba won the first set 6-3, but Pliskova has fought back to take the second set 6-4. And that's wrap in sports news. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. The news of Chen continues shortly. At least 200 people have been killed and over 70 injured in a huge fire that broke out at a packaging factory in Bangladesh. Police say about 100 people were working in the four story building in the town of Tongi just north of the capital Dakar at the time. Officials say the blast was caused by a boiler explosion and flames quickly spread throughout the building. Factory fires are common in Bangladesh where safety conditions are often poor. Anguish in Bangladesh over the loss of several people who died when a fire broke out in a garment packaging factory just outside the capital on Saturday. Dozens more were taken to hospital with injuries as firemen struggled to control the blaze in the four-story building. 
As soon as we knew about the incident, we rushed to the site. There are now 20 fire trucks working to extinguish the fire. We have removed eight bodies to the hospital and are trying to retrieve a further two. Once the fire is out, we will be able to enter the damaged structure to see if there are more bodies. The reason for the fire in the industrial zone of Tongi, 20 kilometers north of Dakar, is not immediately clear. Around 100 people were in the building when it began. At the local hospital, relatives wait for news of their loved ones. I am looking for my brother. I haven't heard from him since this morning. There is no news of him. Ready-made garments are the mainstay of the Bangladeshi economy and earned $28 billion in exports during the fiscal year that ended in June. But weak fire protection systems are common in factories in Bangladesh, where more than 1,100 workers died in a 2013 building collapse that ranks as the country's worst industrial disaster. Air strikes on a busy vegetable market in the rebel-held Syrian city of Idlib has killed at least 20 people and injured several others. This is coming barely hours after the U.S. and Russia reached a landmark agreement endorsing the latest peace deal. A 10-day truce is meant to start on Monday, followed by coordinated airstrikes against jihadist militants. Turkey and the EU had earlier welcomed the plan but warned that further action was needed. The conflict in Syria, which began with an uprising against Assad, has raged for five years and claimed the lives of more than a quarter of a million people. And the main news again, members of the Islamic movement in Nigeria today protested against the continued detention of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki. Also today, Inspector General of Police has directed police commands to be on high alert as preparations for Eid al-Kabir get underway in various parts of the country. That's the news at 10. Many thanks for watching.